Hi, everyone. Welcome to this edition of Conversations with Catherine. I am very happy to have with me Shirley Owens. She is a relationship expert, best-selling author, speaker, and podcaster. I don't know when you have time to sleep, Shirley, but it is nice to have you with me. <laughs> Thank you. I honestly don't sleep much, especially during this time. So, <laughs> Yes, it has been an interesting time with this pandemic, which is why I really wanted to talk to you as a relationship expert, because we're looking at quarantine tested relationships the last uh, almost 10 weeks, right? Yes, for sure. <laughs> and it's, it's kind of interesting because, you know, obviously there's such a big variety of what's going on and the, our domestic violence rate has gone up hugely. And, you know, there's a lot of different things that kind of play a part with that. And, and I've been really studying it and talking to a lot of clients and learning a lot more about like what each individual is going through. So Pretty crazy. It is interesting because as you touched on the domestic violence, there are so many levels to this that I think a lot of people didn't even realize in the beginning. Uh -huh. And we're hearing these stories. Talk to me a little bit about what your clients are telling you are their big challenges, having to have been confined in the same space mm -hmm. with somebody they're not used to being around 24 seven. Yeah. So there's a few different things that I, that are pretty common that I hear. One is that a lot of people that are used to being at work or they're used to being defined through their work have been laid off. I have a neighbor who was laid off after 30 years of work. And I think that finding that identity again for themselves is really hard. And so you put, you mix that in with also having to find your role at home and in your family. And that's been a huge thing. Ego plays a big part. You know, a lot of times people ask you, who you are and you know they'll say I'm a doctor and I'll be like that's what you do but who are you tell me about you you know and so we get defined a lot by what we do and so then when we're no longer doing that there's just this void which which we want to have something some control over something and so a lot of times that's what's happening in homes with the domestic violence is people are trying to take control over something because they there are so many things that they can't control right now Mm -hmm. Well, that's just it. You're, you're dealing with something you can't control and you have all these added stresses mm -hmm. on top of that. You have, you know, moms who are having to be the school teacher and, you know, doing all of the things that they would normally do as, as the person kind of running the home anyway. So mm -hmm. you're just, you have all of these other factors combined with this. Now that we're seeing the restrictions lifted, many of mm -hmm. them, and, and we're slowly returning to some sense of normalcy, whatever that looks like. What do you suggest that couples do navigating this new normal and coming out of maybe a period that wasn't all that fantastic? So I would say, I, first of all, to moms, it is, this has been such a, a rough time. I have 10 people living at my house, so I get that personally. Oh, wow. <laughs> but I think there's a lot of guilt that goes with that. And so, so when, if you put the two together, say you have a husband and wife and a family, you know, he's having issues with his ego and with not being able to work as much she's ha or working from home, which is another whole new, you know, thing. So she's feeling guilty for not being able to put as many things in front of her kids. And, and as, as couples and as families, parents, we don't spend that much quality time. It's like less than an hour in dirt, mm -hmm. you know, with research in the U S that's what it is. It's less than an hour that we spend quality time with our husbands, our wives, our, our kids. And, so now all of a sudden we're just like all piled in the same place and we're, and we're learning about each other. And I think that, I think moving forward, really something that we could do to add a positive twist to this is to ask our spouse or our partner, ask them, what is it like being married to me or living with me or being my partner? What is that like for you? And then actually taking the time to listen to what they have to say. Cause I think that gives us a insight on who we're being in the relationship. And that's, really what I teach a lot about is how we are being in the relationship. And so I know for me, I've maybe been a little less tolerant at home because I have everyone on top of me and I'm trying to work and I have, you know, and then I'm sharing, I'm sharing an office and uh, my husband's a doctor. So he does get out and that, and that's like kind of crazy dynamic too, because he's out mm -hmm. in the world, you know, working and I'm at home. And so I'm, I, I'm kind of a little bit like envious of the fact that he gets to relate with other people. But then he, but then when I ask him like, what is it like for you to be out there? He's like, I'm in, I'm right in it. Like I am wearing a mask 
for 12 straight hours and goggles and, you know, not knowing with my patients, he has been exposed. And so having to come home mm -hmm. and then have that yeah. guilt with the family and all of that type of thing. So there's a lot of things that are going on. So I would say that just to take the time to ask each other what it's like to be in that relationship and mm -hmm. really seek to see the other's perspective on what they might be going through. You know, I can relate to that because I have been at home and my husband's been able to still work. And so, mm -hmm. you know, do you feel like in talking to your clients or maybe in your own situation, there's a little bit of resentment that starts mm -hmm. to creep up because, you know, I feel like, well, you come home and you've been out in the real world, like you said, and I don't get to leave. Yes. And we want to talk and right. they may be exhausted from that. I, I've heard that quite a bit. Um, you know, they're like, we're so lonely and then they come home and we want to spend time with them, but they're exhausted from their day. And yeah, so there's definitely some of that going on. And I would just say to the other person that's out in the world to try to really be aware and take time to listen to the, you know, listen to what he or she is saying and, and how they're feeling. It's so important to be aware of that. And I think that it helps mm -hmm. us to have a kinder, softer heart towards the other person. And, and, the, and then like us also, right? That we're home right. and we wish we could be out there, but do we really want to be in what they're being put into right now? So Not yet anyway. No. I'm fine <laughs> staying at home for a few more weeks at least. Me too, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so in creating more positivity then, as mm -hmm. again, we're starting to get back into a routine that looks a little like what it did before this pandemic mm -hmm. started. Do you have any strategies that you recommend? I mean, I'm sure that you've never experienced this kind of situation with your clients before, but maybe situations that were very trying like this, where you had to help them navigate back to that positive place. Well, I really feel like, and this is something that's been coming up just like right now for me is I'm realizing that it, this was really hard to adjust to going into and it's going to be the same amount of hard to adjust to coming out of because now we have learned how to you know be with be with everybody at home and we've you know we our our normal is going to be different from here on out like forever and so yeah I think there's going to be a lot of adjusting and I would say to continue to be patient continue to see others perspectives continue to be kind. I have a brother-in-law that was on a ventilator for 29 days with COVID. And he, during that time, his family met every single day, like all of the extended family met on Zoom every single day. And they bonded again, where from all over the United States. And he, he did end up passing, but they, I feel that there, that there was a very positive thing that came out of that. And so I would say, you know, remember what it feels like to get to spend all this time with your family. Be, remember to be closer to them, you know, schedule weekly date nights, continue this getting to know you time, continue learning how to go from, you know, we were so busy as parents, we're taking kids to sports and we're constantly going. I think that the world has completely slowed down and it's been really beautiful in so many ways. And so I would say, mm -hmm. you know, try to find that balance between slow and fast paced and, and remember what this time was like, because I think that even though it's been a rough time, I think there's been so many beautiful things that have come out of it. And so the adjusting to going back to all of a sudden, everybody, not only going back to a fast pace, but maybe even a little bit faster to try to catch mm -hmm. up with everything. So I think it's going to be just another adjusting period where we have to realize that we're not going to be the same and it's okay that we have, you know, down days and up days and kind of all over the place. And, and I would say just to be patient with yourself and to be patient with others. I'm so glad that you mentioned that because I think the thing that's gotten me through this is really focusing on the little blessings that are mm -hmm. everywhere we look mm -hmm. when you choose to look that way. I mean, I think about all the times I ask God for this kind of time. Yes. It's not quite the way I wanted to receive it, but it is there and for it's sure. a blessing. Yeah. So thank you so much for that. Um, great, great advice. I want to let people know that they can find you on your website, which is getwhatyouwantguru.com. Yes. Love that. And you have this great book out, Get What You Want From Your Man, which speaks to women. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so congratulations on all your success. Thank you so much. I really appreciate talking to you and your positivity and, and just helping us kind of reach a, a different place, as you mentioned, a different normal. Thank you so much for having me. It's been amazing. Great. Talk to you. Thank, Thank you. you.